Hi everyone, it's Linda. This is the Intuitive Painting of the Week for October 7th through the 14th. I'm so excited to tell you all about this painting that came out this week. I love it so much. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that I can't possibly cover everything that's in a painting. There's so much more than the words alone or anything can convey. So I would love to hear what you think and what comes through to you. So leave me your comments and send me messages and tell me what you think. <clears throat> so let's get started and we'll walk through this. And again, this painting, the original painting is going to be um, given away at the end of the month for everyone who's subscribed as a co-creator or a collector through Patreon. So make sure you get signed up for that so you don't miss out. Have a wonderful week. close-up look at it so I'm just gonna kind of go through the process I wanted to share kind of um, how I was taken from the background image into what we're seeing now and so if you I, I put the paints down it definitely felt like um, a landscape like a sunset kind of feeling so I knew that piece and then there were a couple white spots left in the center so I felt like that was going to be the focal point of the painting. It looked very much like white sails to me. So I knew there would be a boat or a ship or sailboat. So that's all I knew. And when I began kind of beginning the, the um, like the drawing for the um, sailboat, I was hearing the uh, a song lyric may the four winds blow you safely home and that made me think of uh the grateful dead which made me think of jerry garcia and i took a break and i was listening to some music and then when i came back to the painting i saw this face very clearly up here there were two um this this deep teal there were two spots here and then it kind of started to look like hair coming out and I went, whoa, <laughs> wow, okay. So it reminded me of a, of a photo sometimes we see of Jerry with um, sunglasses on, kind of looking over him, but it was clear to me that wasn't that photo. There's um, um, pretty well-known photographs of him looking over his sunglasses, and those are usually promotional. Um, but, and then, I, so I started looking for action shots of him that I could use as a reference, because it felt like I really wanted to honor him in his in in his um, element, so to speak, <clears throat> as a musician, as as a expressive, creative being. Um, if you're not familiar with Jerry Garcia, definitely look into him. He's amazing. So, um, but he passed away in like '95, and um, so. It was, it, it's partly a tribute to him. I mean, for me personally, I, I feel personally connected to his music. Um, but I didn't want the card to be just about that. It's not just about me and my personal connection, but it, I felt like, okay, there's so much more to this. What, what's coming out for us to learn from this week? So, as I, so then I allowed the painting to continue and really enjoyed kind of bringing him out in the background, the painting process of working with these colors and um, kind of a non-traditional portrait style. So he's, he's not, um, 
if you've seen the, the one I did of Aretha Franklin or any of the other figures that come out in the cards, it's very clear that that's, oh, that's a person there. This one had this really interesting quality where he was part of the the uh, the landscape, the, the, the sea and the sky. And so that comes into play later when I looked at the analysis. The entire time I was painting, I had no idea what the heck the ship is about, what any of this was about. So I just went with whatever I saw. And then um, when I think of... Jerry, I think I, I enjoy all the, the creativity that he expressed, but I associate him mostly with the Grateful Dead and my experiences of um, seeing a couple of shows. And, and so I think of people. I feel like there's this connection and, and community around that. So I felt it was important. At one point, there were like angels dancing up here. So I was like, oh, isn't that cool? He's making music and the angels are dancing too. But they kind of f faded back into the um, thing. But what did not... Um, fade away was these shadow silhouettes down in here. Um, it's like the grass or the nature is also celebrating the sound. And I, I kept having, at one point I thought the, the card would read something about how matter is never created or destroyed, right? Like um, that reverberation or that vibration of music, it's it's unending, like it's always, and that's like our souls, and I was thinking a lot about that. Um, so there's this interconnectedness, this um, mm, ongoing, eternal, in, infinite nature that I kept feeling. <clears throat> I also, what I find really interesting is a few weeks ago, I was looking through the card deck, and I thought, you know, I'd like to really bring in some masculine energies, Very, a lot of feminine figures, a lot of um, women represented in the cards when there are figures, and I would like more males represented, and what a wonderful male to come up for that and answer to that request. So, awesome, awesome. So, getting into some of the symbolism now, once the painting was finished, still no clue what it's about, but I did receive the... Um, let me just pull that up so I can look at it. I did receive the, the words for the card. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to say they, they came from Jerry, but I feel like um, definitely my guides and my connection to non-physical played a part in this, in the words, because they didn't, they didn't come from me, because I didn't really understand them at first. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So what it says, oh, okay, so the one piece I did pull from, so I, like I said, I heard that initial lyric in my head, um, I, and just like with, um, with the, if you're familiar with the Aretha Franklin card that I did a few weeks ago, I, I, you know, I, it wasn't intentional, I wasn't setting out to, to paint this picture of any one thing, it's intuitive, it comes to me as it comes, and when I go to reach for the words, I kind of get the same message as I did with Aretha. It was like, I, I wrote the, or I, the words that were already expressed. Like, I didn't want to regurgitate old song lyrics or anything that they did while they were on, in this plane. It, I wanted it to be something new, something fresh. But I, but I did when I was doing my research, like when I looked because I didn't even look the, the the photo I used as a reference. I didn't realize it, but it but um, I went back and looked at it because I want to put reference so you can see um, the the artist and photographer who took the photo. I wanted to give credit to them, and that'll be in the comments. But um, when I looked back, they had written what song he was playing. So the song that he's playing in this scene um, is called Promise Land. And so the title of the card is Promised Land. It felt very natural to me. And then the words that came to me were similar in their kind of rhyme that reminded me of some of my favorite songs that were um, like co-written with Robert Hunter. And so anyway, the words that came were, when you feel like a vessel lost at sea, remember. And the reason that I began there is because that's the focal point of the painting was this ship. And when I, I went like, oh, okay, what's this, what's this ship about? Oh, maybe I'm the ship that's the spiritual journey that I'm on. 
and I got a really strong verbal, <laughs> like, like no, 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 no. You're not the boat. You're not the boat. Um, you're everything. You're the sea and the sky and the and and the um, breeze blowing through. Um, you are the oasis. You are the the water that you think your vessel is on. Uh, that's what I got very very clearly. And so um, the first line of the card is when you feel like a vessel lost at sea remember you're also the sun and the sky and the warm ocean breeze and so it's like if, if we're talking about the promised land the promise that's made to us the the um the expectation of what life's supposed to be about it the next line is you're exactly where you need to be today the promise isn't just for the landing but the songs will sing on the way so that's what I got. So I wrote, the whole card just came out like, boom, just like that. <clears throat> and then I went back and looked, and I looked at uh, The Promised Land. That song was written originally by Elvis. And if you look at the lyrics and the story that it tells, it's talking about um, going from, like, the deep south and going to the promised land of California to, like, make make his way. Like, um, and, like, I'm, like, going to California, going to, like, make my you know make my dreams come true kind of thing that's the promise I'm going to that promised land where people can go and they can make it big well along the way like a bus breaks down he gets stuck somewhere and then he's got to take a train somewhere it's like planes trains and automobiles right <clears throat> and then he you know so that's kind of the story of that song that promised land uh, it's it's a song about traveling too, and I felt like that was so fitting because we kind of have this movement of um, of a journey of an expedition, and then the thought came to me as I was reading that like, well, damn, what if the bus never broke down and he just went straight, <laughs> like he got straight there, then there'd be no nothing to sing about, right? Um, so it was kind of that realization that like it's not about the destination, it's the journey. And then um, when I was looking at, too, looking at this boat, I was thinking about um, uh, Ship of Fools, which is, a, which is another song. But again, with the, you are not the boat. You are not your outward appearance. You are not the vessel that you think you're contained in. You're so much more than that. Well, um, Ship of Fools, I th this is my interpretation, and feel free to share your own. But um, Ship of Fools, I believe, is is referencing slightly um, a practice back in like I don't know back in the the day I'm glad I don't live in anymore where um, there, it was a separation of the like people who were different or abnormal mentally or considered crazy or lunatics or whatever they sent them out to sea basically and they kind of had this idea that that the sea, because of its tumultuous nature and its ebb and flow and its changing, whatever, that that's kind of where they belonged, right? And so it, it's the ship of fools is kind of this idea of um, of separating the, or that practice, not necessarily the song, but the, the practice is the idea of separating the abnormal from the normal. Um, and really what I felt strongly was kind of that's a message of, like, don't, don't let anyone convince you to separate yourself because of your differences. Don't let anybody put you on that ship of fools. And the, the lyrics of that song, um, don't lend your hand to raise no flag atop no ship of fools. Like, don't contribute to what keeps us separated. Don't contribute to or don't allow, and don't let people convince you to to raise a flag on a ship that, that you don't believe in, you know. Um, which is separation from ourselves and others and community and the, um, uh, the our source, our source energy. So looking at the colors, I found this really interesting. So I like to look up, you know, different ideas. I have my own ideas. I'm sure you do of your own ideas of what colors symbolize for you. Um, I have them for myself, but I always like to kind of, you know, go to Google University and learn something. <laughs> so I... I did a little search on the color teal, and I have heard people say that it's like a transitionary color and, and things like that. It's right between the heart and the throat chakra, so it could be um, self-expression, expressing oneself authentically, those kinds of things. 
But I did find that, like, um, Tibetan monks will, um, uh, I don't know if this is true. It, it came from Google. I don't know. But <laughs> I found it really synchronistic that it, it talked about, um, in reference to Tibetan monks, teal symbolizing the infinity of sea and sky, which totally makes sense because it kind of looks like that when you look out to the sea and sky. <clears throat> but it fits so much with with the message of this card. You're also the sun, the sky, and the warm ocean breeze. You're, you're not just the vessel, you're the sea and the sky. And I feel like teal, and this is a vibrant teal, and I'm hoping that camera's picking it up so you can see it. Um, I worked really hard to get the card to reflect these colors because they're very unique. Um, it's not just orange and yellow. It's not just blue and green. It's these really specific teal and coral colors are very vibrant. Um, but then also I found like an Egyptian um, interpretation of that color would be like truth and faith. I don't know that they created teal. Um, if they had the resources to create teal, probably. But um, yeah, so again, like for me, I'm looking at teal as a connection or a, um, a bridge between the heart and the throat chakra. So we're talking about connection and growth, um, clarification, ex personal expression. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then when we look at like the orange and this coral, it's like this. It's it runs the spectrum from yellow to red, right? It's it's not it's not yellow. It's not red. But it's not really orange. It's kind of like this mix of colors and I love it <laughs> and so <clears throat> what these colors can represent are like passion and pleasure and enthusiasm vitality optimism humor lightness and I definitely feel that humor and lightness I feel that from the energy of Jerry Garcia like I feel that humor and lightness as I was working with some things when I was working with the words and, and the words coming through the card <clears throat> I felt like um, how do I say it? like just fun like it was just fun it was playful it was you know um, work it was it rhymes so much more than other cards do and it was just fun it was really it was, I felt like and I and so it was like a yeah, it was, I, I, yeah, anyway, so, <laughs> so that's what um, those colors are all about, so looking at overall, it, I, I just love this card, I think this is, this is definitely one of my favorites, and I am a, a little biased, I think, but, um, and then I, we, I think we talked about, I, I, I did put this out before I've recorded this, um, I put it out on Facebook, and I got some, um, reflections and insights back too. So fascinating. I didn't connect, and I'm a huge Crosby, Stills, and Nash fan. Um, didn't connect the song Wooden Ship. So um, talking about that song too, I made myself a note for it, and I don't know what I did with it, but oh yeah, here it is. So I, what I was thinking about was the, like, if you heard that song, um, they talk about like wooden ships on the water, free and easy, the way it's supposed to be. Um, and from their perspective, when they were writing it, they were thinking about war. I mean, they were thinking about um, the conflict that's in our life. And, I, and so I think it's something we can relate to today, too. But I love that free and easy, the way it's supposed to be. So it, it touches back on that idea of a promise. So it's like the promise isn't just for the landing, but the songs will sing on the way. It's supposed to be free and easy. It's supposed to be fun and playful. Life is supposed to be a joy-filled expression of who we are. And it doesn't really matter whether you're, um, you know, so while you're looking at this, how do you, do you feel like you're the ship, you're on the ship, you're in the the sea and sky you're on the shore looking out or you're all of it it doesn't really matter because it's not about the destination wherever you are it's all right it's all right so you're exactly where you need to be um, the promise isn't just for the landing but the songs will sing on the way so that is this week's card thank you so much for joining me and i hope that it inspires and brings you joy Mm-hmm. <laughs>